Let's work through this problem of finding the mass of the wire. So first we're going to set up the integral and then we'll um, go ahead and crank it out in MATLAB and finally we'll take a look at this graphically. So here's the problem statement. Let W represent a thin wire bend in the shape of a circle of radius 3 centered at the origin in the XY plane. The density of the wire is given by rho of XY equals X squared plus 1 grams per centimeter at every point XY along the wire. Find the mass of the wire. So we can start with um, our equation for the scalar line integral, um, the integral of f of x and y ds. And then we can quickly translate this in terms of our application problem here, where we have our mass is equal to the integral of rho of x and y, where we just replaced um, our function with, with rho, our density function. And we can go ahead and define that a little bit further, because we're going to evaluate from a to b. Um, and that's going to be over certain times because we can change that ds to the magnitude of the derivative of our position vector r of t. But you may see here we're not quite ready to plug in for a, b, or r of t. We haven't really defined what they are yet. So um, let's go ahead and graph this out to, to, um, to see. So here is our curve c. We typically don't need to plot this in three dimensions. But um, we're going to come back to three dimensions here, so um, we'll just plot it out like this for now. And what we need to do is find the parametric equations for x and y that are going to define one loop around this curve C. Um, it takes maybe a little creativity, but um, the circle is pretty easy. And um, we typically define it as x equal to cosine of t and y equal to sine of t. So if we do that, what this does is it gives us this um, parameterization where it just... Um, follows that unit circle at t equals 0 we start at the point 1 0 and we move along to um, going through a full loop when t equals 2 pi and so these t values when we're starting at 0 and ending at 2 pi for that full loop those um, 0 and 2 pi are going to be our a and b and we found those but we needed this to be a um, radius of 3 so all we got to do is multiply our x and our y by 3 and we have our x is equal to 3 cosine of t, or y is equal to 3 sine of t, and our position vector r of t is just going to, we're just going to plug those x and y components in. Um, but of course, we're going to need the magnitude of the derivative of our position vector r of t. But rather than do that by hand, um, which we could, it's not too bad, but why not just let MATLAB um, take it from here? Um, before we go into MATLAB, first let me note that um, there are an infinite number of combinations of sine and cosine parameterizations that are going to work for this. As long as we're getting, um, it doesn't really matter where we start or um, how fast you're going around this loop, but as long as you're good taking one loop around this exact circle, um, you'll get the same answer and it's going to be correct. So with that, let's move on into MATLAB. All right, so as usual, we're going to start by defining our variables here. So we've got x, we've got y, we've got r, we've got t for time, and we got rho. And let's go ahead and now define our x that we found, which was 3 times cosine of t. And we can define our y, which was 3 times sine of t. And we can define our r, which was just the vector with these x and y components. And we can define our rho, which was our x squared plus 1. So with that, we're ready to go ahead and just throw all this into an integral. So we've got the integral of our rho times the magnitude of the derivative of our position vector function differentiated with respect to t integrated with respect also to t going from 0 to 2 pi and f5 cranks that out and we get a nice little tidy answer of 33 pi so that was it so this may be a little gratuitous, a little overkill, but I love to graph and visualize everything. So let's um, try and visualize this in three space. So we start off with this curve here, our C, and that represents the path of the wire that we parameterized. Now imagine that z-axis, instead of being a height in three space, imagine that z-axis represents the density of that wire at each of those points on the wire. So if we went ahead and plotted that out, um, that height, it would kind of look like this. So we could kind of move around and see. Um, 
So if you took this point over here, uh, 1, 0, you can see the density is really high, but if you took this point, um, or zero, I guess that's 0, 3 right here, you can see the density is um, pretty low. And so that you can see that the, how that density is varying as uh, you go along this wire. And what we actually found was when we integrated, when we did this line integral, what we found, if you want to think of it graphically here, was sort of the surface area underneath that blue line. So that, that surface area under that blue line, it turns out that, that um, the total of that surface area represented the total mass of this wire. So um, you, may, you may not really think of the line integral as like the area under a curve, but you know, if you want to visualize it like this, it's still, it still is the area under a curve if, if, you, if you think of it in three space like this. So I hope this sort of connects to what you're familiar with from Calc 2, where the integral is the area under a curve. And the next thing we're going to take a look at is doing line integrals over vector fields. So until then, take care.